My earliest memories of reading are of my mother reading to me as a child. She read to me every night until I was able to read myself, and both my brother and I became avid readers. The only piece of furniture in my room that my father made himself was my bookcase. I understand what Burkerts means when he states that he used a book as a screen, a shield, an escape, and later when he says, this notion of hiding, secreting myself in a text was important to me. It underlies to this day my sense of a book as a refuge. Like Burkert, I'm an introvert, and I've definitely used books to create a space for myself, a place where people would respect and understand that I probably shouldn't be interrupted, um, a time for myself to feel at peace, to feel calm, and to rejuvenate. I've also used books as a means of creating a place of safety, as Burkert says, a refuge, and making myself feel a little bit more at home at times when I was traveling and feeling culture shock. There's one trip in particular where I went to the Atlas Mountains of Morocco and was really out of my element and feeling very uncomfortable, especially in the evenings when there wasn't any electricity. And there were these endless hours when I was just there awake in the darkness, needing um, somewhere to put my thoughts other than where I was at the moment. And I used to hoard candles. I used to make sure during the day that I collected enough candles to sustain the reading I was going to do that night until I fell asleep. I first discovered James Baldwin while living on a small military installation north of Seoul, South Korea in a largely agricultural part of the country. There weren't any English bookstores other than shopping online. And so I went to the post exchange and went to their book section and went to the section there called, I think it was ethnic literature. And what I found were largely just one shelf of African-American writers with kind of over-sexualized book covers. And so James Baldwin's book stood out in that it was uh, very simple. It looked like a book I could get something out of. And so I brought it home and have been reading James Baldwin ever since. The book I chose to read for this project was the first one that I that I read of his books called Go Tell It on the Mountain. And, and while it's not my very favorite book of his, it's a beautiful book and it's the first book of his that I read. What struck me first about it was how much this man feels and how he's able to express what he experiences in life, the good, the bad, the ugly, in a way that's so honest and so beautiful that it just transcends any boundaries. I'm able to relate to him. I'm able to feel his characters. I'm able to learn, not because I'm a man or I'm black or I'm gay or I'm poor or I grew up during that era, but because James Baldwin is an amazing writer and I truly appreciate the work that he's done. There's a passage I'd like to read from Go Tell It on the Mountain that illustrates how James Baldwin's able to illustrate what he feels, what he sees, what he intuitively knows through his main character, John, who's speaking about his mother. Her face became the face that he gave her in his dreams, the face that had been hers in a photograph he'd seen once, long ago, a photograph taken before he was born. This face was young and proud, uplifted, with a smile that made the wide mouth beautiful and glowed in the enormous eyes. It was the face of a girl who knew no evil could undo her, and who could laugh, surely, as his mother did not laugh now. Between the two faces there stretched a darkness and a mystery that John feared, and that sometimes caused him to hate her. Burkert writes about a sense of the deep and natural connectedness to things as being a function of vertical consciousness. And that this brings wisdom, the knowing not of facts, but of truths about human nature and the process of life. And this is something I find through James Baldwin's work. While Burkert seems to value the vertical nature of reading versus the horizontal, having electronic medium available to me allowed me a greater, I think, depth of understanding of the author and his work. I was able to go online and find the books that I couldn't find in the bookstore to do a wider selection of reading of the author. I was also able to go online and find video clips of interviews that he'd given and short films that had been made about his life. 
I heard a recording of him singing and learned things about his family that helped explain some of his characters. When I started reading the book, I was at peace. I just felt very calm and absorbed in Baldwin's writing. And that's something that's hard to capture nowadays. I thought it would be interesting to include a clip about James Baldwin speaking about reading and the way he learned. You think your pain and your heartbreak are unprecedented in the history of the world, but then you read. It was books that taught me that the things that tormented me the most were the very things that connected me with all the people who were alive or had ever been alive. I went to the 135th Street Library at least three or four times a week. And I read everything there, I mean every single book in that library. In some blind and instinctive way, I knew that what was happening in those books was also happening all around me. And I was trying to make a connection between the books and the life I saw and the life I lived. I knew I was black, of course, but I also knew I was smart. I didn't know how I would use my mind, or even if I could, but that was the only thing I had to use. And I was going to get whatever I wanted that way, and I was going to get my revenge that way. So I watched school where I watched the streets, because part of the answer was there. Even though there's a lot of pain in Baldwin's experience and in his work, he still believes in humanity, and he believes in making it better. And he believes in love, and I find that truly amazing. He also speaks of trust, about being able to trust him, which was interesting because when I chose his book, one of the words that came to mind is, I trust this author. I trust the experience I'm going to have with him, and I trust him to be honest. Love for books needs to perpetuate. But I do think that the electronic medium that we have available to us today enhances that reading and gives us so many more options for understanding and communicating with each other, with the authors, and with scholars. So I embrace absolutely what's happening today with all the options available to us. But I do think that a fundamental is being able to read a book and to be able to read print and beautiful prose. Thank you.